This conference will now be recorded. Hi, this is Bill O'Brien, 9th District Councilman and chairing the Public Works Committee of November 7th, 2022 in uh, place of Ken Poison, who's at a soccer game coaching. And it's now 5 p.m. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 3rd? Motion to approve. I'll second. Any, any other discussion? Aileen do their usual good job. <laughs> okay, so we uh, approve that unanimously. And Renee, you're up to bat. Um, does anybody have any specific questions? I have sent over my report. So if you have any specific, we'll just do that way rather than go over everything in my report. That'll take a while. Yeah, that works. Want to go first to Caitlin? Sure. My screen just give me two seconds. It's split. There we are. Okay. Um, Renee, is there an update regarding the tennis courts that came up during the Longbrook Park Commission meeting? What the official status was? Someone said it was um, delayed indefinitely. It is because the price is way exceeded our budget. We're going to have to revisit a new number in the upcoming capital. It's just it's well over a million, it's like the 1.2, 1.3 range. Okay. So I guess my if it's to you or if I have to go back to Mayor Hoytick, what happens with the $750,000 that was bonded for that project? It won't it's be bonded. It's on the books. It rolls into, so I'll just, when this new capital proposal gets proposed, I will just ask for the difference, enough to cover from what was already spent in engineering, because there was some money spent in engineering, then re-engineering. So I will just ask for the difference to cover it all, make sure we have enough to get them done. Okay. Renee, do you Thank know you. where what caused the biggest increase? <laughs> materials uh labor i mean it's it's a combination of both um it just you know when this was bid way before there wasn't the supply chain issue that there is right now and there's a plethora of work and they can be picky and raise the rates and not care and that's basically how what we're seeing across the board with everything it's not just it's, it's every bid we put out we're going to have to think about this when we go to our next capital proposal, you know, just increasing our request a percentage because it's just we're chasing numbers. But don't just... worry about it. After I win Powerball tonight, I'll take care of it for you. Perfect. Is that good luck? <laughs> no, no time. I do have yeah. a question. That's okay. Sorry, Bill, I do have one more question. Oh, sure, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to Public Works and uh, the, your team, Renee, uh -huh. for coming out and helping with, um, you know, the aftermath cleanup. So everybody really appreciated how quickly um, that was done. So thank you. Great, awesome. And might as well continue with thanks for a minute. Thanks for the support and the great work by Public Works, being of the banners, the reaction to the Veterans Banners has been incredible. And if you haven't seen the article in the Connecticut Post yet, there's an online article that was done by a report and you did a great job. I, I did see it. I have a feeling next year we're gonna be like the graduation banners and there's gonna be two veterans on every post going up and down Barnum and Main Street. Yeah, I think they're right away, I've heard from several people that wanna know how they can get their banners up there. So we might do it as a fundraiser. Awesome. Good idea. Good idea. Laura, do you have anything? Um, I'm not seeing anything. Um, that's popping out right this very minute. So I'm good. Hey, Renee, the, the uh, Worcester basketball court looks great. And can you give us a, an update on Lordship that was vandalized? Oh. Uh, they caught the, the kids, and we have. Um, Hending, who did it, uh, giving us a quote to do the repairs, and they're going to, um, you know, put it back to what it was before it was vandalized. Um, and the uh, cost of that will be passed on to the the, the kids' parents. Good. Right. That's great. Chief McNeil, he's he's kind of gonna go after them for the money. 
And I hope the kids get community service too, maybe clean porta potties and some stuff like that. I imagine it depends on what the co total cost is. It'll depend. I know it's a certain threshold they could go into a different type of charge. Oh, okay. It's disheartening. But. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Um, maybe, I don't know, off the top of your head or in the future, what kind of money or fees come in through the transfer station? You know, what, what people have to pay there in commercial, especially, I guess. Oh, I'll have to get you those numbers. I don't know that off the top of my head. And I'm not sure. Do you guys get uh, financials, revenue financials at all? from? No. Okay. Um, I'll get that number. So I'll be prepared next time uh, we meet. I can get the numbers from Rocky and let you know what they've brought in so far. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Bill. I have two more, two more sure, questions for Renee. We don't. Um, John's not even on yet, I don't think. John's okay. not covering uh, for him. What's that? Oh, John's not coming on. He's traveling. I'm covering for him. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, the Raymark Box Culvert Project, could could you just give us a little, sorry. <laughs> so that's a big one. Have you seen it? It's, um, th so they're, they're actually bringing a, a line that is coming right behind um, the building with the daffodils being painted and then going across um they're they're pretty well involved in it i mean if you i drove by today and that whole grass area by the building is completely open and exposed and it's chugging along but um that's pretty much all i have i think if you participate in the raymark uh, meetings once a month they give updates as to their timeline i'm not specific of their timeline because we don't have anything to do with it other than just making sure we're aware when they're on our property and what they're doing on the property. But um, they've got it pretty pretty wide open right now and I think are now laying the pipe behind the building. Is this supposed to help solve the flooding problem at the viaduct? I don't think this has anything yeah. to do with that per se, that project. Um, and I mean, you know, they're putting in the new um, pump station over there, which, you know, we'll hope, you know, it's going to handle a whole lot more water, but I don't think that you're going to see like flooding just disappear. Okay. So, you know, there's just too many factors that are against us with the low lying um, plane there that, you know, I, I think though it will help somewhat in that vicinity, no doubt, but I don't think you're ever going to see no flooding happen over there. Thanks. And then my last question i think <laughs> is um i don't see it on here but maybe it's for john town engineering the sidewalk improvement project um i had sent an email on plymouth street mm -hmm. um there were a couple residents that just had questions concerns um i'm grateful as i'm sure many people are that the sidewalks are being addressed um is there a list of where or, or which streets are actually being um, taken care of right now? Uh, there isn't an exact list. Uh, we kind of go out and rate sidewalks as we get complaints and have worked, I mean, just like trees, there's an enormous list of sidewalks. And then we'll find that there are sidewalks that have not been reported till just recently that are an immediate tripping hazard and we need to go out so that's kind of how we triage and and prioritize sidewalks so there isn't a specific list and we typically don't go out and ring doorbells and tell people we're replacing the sidewalk just because you know we've talked about this with the contractors before we go out to bid they give us a great price we kind of work with them where they can say okay well if you're giving me all of these streets I will wait and then come and do it all at one time for me to come and do one street, then leave, then come back when I can do another street. doesn't work for them. So just too much administrative work on our part to go around and then be locked into that and people be calling. Nine times out of 10, most people are just so thrilled to see the sidewalk be replaced because it's probably been in disrepair and they've probably been sending us complaints for some time now. And they're just thrilled we're out there and that it'll be a nice new concrete sidewalk. So that's kind of how we handle it. Okay. 
And I know um, Kim Rice, Councilwoman, District 4, um, she just passed along. You know, I want to say thank you. A lot of the residents there are very, very grateful that they're finally being uh, worked on. I know that's taken a long time. So, yep. Extension, thanks. Great. Okay, if there's nothing else, I guess you can continue as John Casey. Okay, so um, there's a couple of items in here, like we'll cover under new business action items, um, A through I, specifically because we need some favorable recommendations. Uh, the first one is the uh, hydraulic evaluation. Um, the way John Casey explained it to me, that there is um, a new FEMA type of guideline uh, requiring certain areas of town to now comply with this new uh, level of, of, like, if you're going to make improvements, you have to raise your property up by a significant amount. And so what we want to do is we want to have um, GZA come in and study or take a look at how FEMA came to that and see if there is any discrepancies or any wiggle room in there to come back and say, okay, wait a second, you're, you know, you're imposing too high of a, of a requirement on these properties that are so far outside of a, a flood zone. So if you're down on access road, and you're requiring them to raise their property as high as some of the houses you see on Washington Parkway, that's insane. Nobody's gonna do that. And so what we want them to do is we, we want GZA to look at those requirements and see if, um, if they looked at it in a way that is um, more beneficial for the, the residents and the companies down there and not have them comply with that ridiculous um, threshold that they're making the others that are waterfront property. So that's what we're we're looking at there. That's what the seventy-two thousand dollars is. Is we'd like to have a study to kind of look at that study that FEMA did that put this. It's called like a LIMWA. It's a limit of um, moderate wave action, and it's it's. You know, I get the benefit is for for flooding issues, but I think the area that that you know the far out area that they're now making this a requirement of is maybe maybe not. We don't know for sure, but we'd like to know for sure because we've got residents and we've got businesses who are like, I can't do anything. I can't improve my property without do, without now complying with FEMA, and that's crazy. So Renee, is there, um, this is basically along the coast, I'm assuming, and then um, how many miles in? It's, it's. I don't know how many miles in, but we are specifically talking about like that access road area where there's a few residences and businesses. So if you look at access road and like right across the street um, on that property over there, it's that area. So they've expanded it. So it used to be just like kind of right along the, immediate coastline and now they've expanded it so far that it's like almost impossible to comply with and so we're trying to figure out you know are they seeing something we don't know or are they overreaching and we can come up with a good argument to say listen you really need to like loosen up the the requirements in this area because you know it does all companies there they're all big businesses there pretty much right there are, there are, and there are a few, you know, there are a few residents over in that area too. So if you want to do a significant improvement to your house, you can't without complying. And so you more than likely wouldn't be able to afford to do both. Hmm. Okay, so, well, um, I will make a motion to favorably approve an amount of $72,000 for the GZA study amendment. Favorably, uh, yeah, I said favorably recommend to town council. <laughs> I'll second. Any uh, further discussion? I mean, I know that there, there's different maps. There's the hurricane evacuation zone um, 
map that people have access to. And then there's the flood zone. And I didn't know any of this till I think it was last summer when we missed whatever the hurricane was missed us. Um, and in terms of people being evacuated, but um, I mean, if, if are there any subsidies from the government to help uh, the cost that people would need in order to comply with? We don't know yet. Okay. We don't. We don't know yet. Our goal is to, you know, look at it and see, you know, what are they looking at? Is it realistic? Are you know, how did they come to this? Uh, is there different different studies that would kind of disprove kind of what they're seeing or, or like make them see it in a different light? Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. We just we just want to look at what FEMA has now put in place as these new regulations and requirements and see if they're reasonable. So there's FEMA flood zones in my district. I'm assuming that they're not going to look at all FEMA flood zones, just this little area. That's yeah, coastal. yeah. We this is it's come to our attention that the that the, this specific area is is being held to this high standard, and that's causing an issue. Yeah, FEMA seems yes, to be at times very yeah. unreasonable and unfair as far as the the cost they put on people. And I think it all sure. determines on where they see the moderate wave action contributing. And so I think it's more of the coastline and now they're extending it a little bit further out where we think it's, you know, a little bit too far, but we don't know for sure. We need we need some experts to take a look at it and give us their honest opinion. My only other question is um and instead of the town having to pay $72,000 for a study, can't we just request all of the data and statistics that the federal government has used for no cost so that we could actually have that information? I mean, have we, we asked for the request it. We just don't, we're not qualified to decipher it and to, to expand upon it. That's the, that's where we run into it is that we, we can't even come back to FEMA because we don't have that expertise to say, okay, here's the data that you have for the regulations. You know, we believe this. We we just don't have that expertise. We need uh, an actual engineering study who who has this specialty to take a look at it. Okay. All right. Then all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Aye, Aileen. Okay, the next item, the Stratford Ave Honey Spot Road, that's the uh, roundabout by two roads. Um, we need a, an additional $25,000 because um, the state has changed some of their um, requirements for the engineering and design. And then there is um, a slight issue with the gas station and coming out of the roundabout and taking a left into um, two roads and the gas station and we're, they kind of have to focus on that area to figure out how to make that so that traffic doesn't stop in the roundabout coming out of it, waiting to take a left into two roads or traffic coming in and out of the gas station because they have two entrances and exits. And so they kind of want to look at a different design of maybe taking the gas station and making um, the, the if you're coming um, out of past VIP to the gas station, making that first entrance just an in on the, the right hand side. And then if you're going to take a left into the gas station, you have to use the farther uh, driveway from VIP. So this $25,000 would, number one, comply with the new state um, requirements for the engineering and then to also, they, they're kind of hung up on that area and how to manage the traffic, making lefts and rights out of those two businesses without causing uh, a traffic log in the, the roundabout, which could potentially cause accidents because you've got people coming from 
three different locations into the roundabout. You don't want traffic backing up and roundabout's supposed to keep traffic moving and not stop it. Is there some sort of a um, drawing that we can look at? Um, I don't have the drawing. John may have it and I could send it to you separately. I've seen earlier ones, but I've seen earlier ones because um, we've been talking about this roundabout since I've been on town council. <laughs> Oh. That's state. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, that's Have all the issues been worked out with the the owners, the business owners? I know that was a problem for a we're while. We're working on it at the same time. We're we're talking to them at the same time. But either way, we're going to have to meet with the state's requirements anyway. So we're going to have to have some of the uh, drawings and stuff redone. <clears throat> And that's this will cover some of that cost as well as addressing that other issue. Well, do we have a motion? For lack of another option, I'll um, motion to approve the $25,000 as a favorable recommendation to the town council regarding the Stratford Honey Spot Road. Um, improvements i'll second any uh, more discussion if not all in favor aye um, i'd like aye. to know if this is gonna get done in my lifetime i know <laughs> all right uh thanks okay. yeah. um next up circle drive bridge um we just you know as we're doing the work we're encountering some issues this twenty three thousand is um going to cover those issues because we are actually trying to um save some of the structure that's already there so we're not doing the whole bridge from scratch so this money will cover uh the work that needs to be done to um, address saving some of the structure at the Circle Drive Bridge and some other things that we've kind of run into when we've uh, started the work over there that we, you know, you don't know until you dig it all up. And so they've come across some other things. Renee, do you remember the total cost that we had already allotted for the Circle Drive Bridge? Because this, is, this, is, this would be in addition to this would be in addition to it. I'm not sure of the total amount that's been budgeted for Circle Drive and approved so far. I'd have to get back to you on that. So I think uh, I recall that we had three options and maybe two options and we picked the least expensive out of all of them. So um, because we figured this area is not high traffic, it's not, it's a side area and didn't need a, a full, um, rebuild of the of the bridge so this would be an, ad, an additional 25,000 and I I'm trying to remember what the other number was if we're just getting closer to that other number that we didn't want to go with yeah, that's what I remember too just the options but the one we went with was much less expensive right I want to yeah. say it was like 900,000 or something was it I don't, re I don't recall. Yeah, I, don't remember. I don't remember what it was, but I'm looking here. I mean, under his, um, under John Casey's uh, description that he had sent out, um, he talks about additional work requested for design, including structural design work related to retrofitting existing abutment to be left in place due to conflicts with guardrail details and bridge rail to make uh, conforming to current codes. And then there's a, a utility pole relocation that's got to be done and planting plan, including inventory of existing vegetation and design of native replanting. Um, so that's $23,000 for, for all of that. So it's a combination of uh, a couple different things. Okay. Um, Bill, I'll make a motion to accept item AC Circle Drive Bridge STV design amendment, $23,000 with a favorable, favorable recommendation to town council. I'll second. Thanks, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, pass it unanimously, thank you. Okay, 
Next is uh, the Broad Street Bridge. And this is to do surveys for an easement. We need an easement over there for that project. And remember that project is kind of going to raise the road and deal with some of the flooding and whatnot over there. So this, this 6250 is for surveying and permits and stuff like that uh, for the easement that we need. I'll make a motion to approve. Um, Item AD, the Broad Street, Broad Street Bridge STV survey amendment and the amount of $6,250 as a favorable recommendation to the town council. I'll second. Again, any uh, other discussion? Is this going to be um, in that FEMA flood zone and it's going to be high enough, this road? In yeah. that FEMA report? Yep. And this is all, you know, again, tied in with the state. Um, so we will meet all the requirements for FEMA, state, everything. Um, and as well, we're working on the pump station over there as well. Um, replacing uh, the pumps, kind of updating it, upsizing it um, to hopefully, again, all these little things. Again, there's never going to be a 100% cure to flooding. But hopefully all of these little things combined together will make a difference that people see so they won't maybe flood as often as they are now or that the storm would have to be a certain level before they see flooding. All right. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Passes unanimously. Um, the old... Hey, you guys, hey, Aileen, are we going to have to stop at 530 for the other meeting to start? Or... No, we can, we can just keep going because I can't leave this. Okay. And then okay. Right. So let me just cover the next uh, couple items as quickly as I can that need your favorable recommendation. Um, the next one is the Seymour uh, Street Jackson Avenue uh, design over there. There's there's a bunch of. I'm sorry. I think you skipped E, the Old Spring Road. Yeah, well, I don't that need one. A recommendation for that. It's under five thousand. Oh, under five thousand. So we'll skip over to the Seymour Street, Jackson Avenue. That's to deal with along Seymour. Um, there's some piping uh, that is in crust. It's in it's too small. There's a lot of issues over there. This is going to um, hire the engineering company that's going to take a look at it and tell us what's wrong all the way over there that connects all the way up to Jackson, what needs to be done. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve item AF Seymour um, Street Jackson Ave design contract award to Weston and Sampson in the amount of $134,000 with a favorable recommendation to town council. I'll second. Any other discussion? Let me just quickly ask Renee, would the, the grant money we're getting, um, will that help with these two projects? I'm not sure if it's the same area. Is it? I don't think it is. No. Okay. I think that grant money is going to come into play when I talk about L a little bit when we get down to Bruce Brook. Okay. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So the next, oh, wait, you've got it. Oh, okay. all, cool. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Pass unanimously. Thanks. Okay. Uh, the South End Drainage Study, you guys know about this. We put it out to bid. We did some interviews. This is the winning bidder who's going to start that project. I'll make a motion to approve item AG, South End Drainage Study Contract Award to Weston and Sampson in the amount of $144,600 with a favorable recommendation to town council. I'll second. Any other discussion? I remember this. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just so glad this is happening now. So yeah, yeah. 150. So we're within the budget. We're good to go. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, another one passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay. The last one, Bruce Brook at Boab Western uh, Sampson. Um, so that's that's part of that whole project. It's on the um, Boston Avenue side taking a look at that area over there, but this is like a small part that, this would cover a small part of the whole 
project that we have applied for grant funds. So what we're doing is we're asking for this to kind of get this moving, but if the grant comes through, then we won't draw down the dollars. Okay. So this is the 1.6 million? Project. I'm sorry? This is the 1.6 million we asked for? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd have to ask John Casey. I don't know what the total was that was asked for. I'll make a motion to approve the Bruce Brook FO Avenue project for Weston and Sampson, an amendment estimated at $132,000 as a favorable recommendation to town council. I'll second. Any other discussion? I just remember with the grant that this was the first piece of, I think, a five-year grant that's going to be many yes. millions of dollars. So. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Passes unanimously. Thank you. And, no, let me just keep going because you only have two more plus yeah. the 2020. You guys can dish this out quickly. Yeah. So the next uh, regular meeting will be Monday, December 5th at 5 p.m. Um, and then we have the virtual meeting on November 17th at 12 p.m. I know I'm signed up for that one. New business. That's everything we just covered, right? No, you Except still have items each. But Item I don't what? need favorable recommendations for that. I mean, I could talk about them, but they don't need council approval. They don't need because they're under 5,000. Right. You want to go through, and I just need you to approve the meeting schedule for 23, please, Bill, if you don't want to do the other two. Yeah, we don't, unless anybody has any questions on the other two. And you can read John's attachments in his report. He does elaborate on every one of those items. If you have any questions, feel free to email. Okay. Now we need a motion, right, Aileen, on the uh, meeting schedule? I'll make a motion to approve the public works meeting schedule for the year 2023. A second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passage unanimously, uh, Aileen, thank you. And with that, we need uh, one final motion. Motion to adjourn. One second. Thank you. We're meeting adjourned at 5.32 p.m. Thanks, everyone.